All right, let's bring the conversation back to Lagos, Nigeria. The Lagos state government has denied forcing the motoring public to purchase tickets to raise funds for the campaign of the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. A statement by the State Commissioner for Transportation, Dr. Frederick Oladendi, said that the stickers were neither created nor circulated by the ministry nor any agency of the government and urged stakeholders, especially those providing public transportation, to report anyone caught selling the stickers in the name of the Lagos State Ministry of Transportation. The chairman, Lagos State Park and Garages Management uh, Committee, Musliu Akinsonya, a.k.a. MC Oluomo, has denied ordering tricycle uh, riders to purchase uh, stickers in support of Bola Tinubu's ambition. We put out a video on social media, and yeah, you can take a look at this. I but a lay early black name wa ni Nigeria because of one lelo da levin sheru ko be yen ni aduru mi a ni pe ko mustika pe ko mata ni 1000 je bi pa wa ni abi aeri owo fi se ko ni ro le je npa eyan ota yi ro le npa so ye yin si ebe ta ba ma de amade be Ashwadu lo ni present in yen sere ni a gboro lele ju ma re Ashwadu ma de present in yen ko so bo tele da ko si ko tele se ni Nigeria yi awa Wow um there you have it and that's the video that's made MC Oluwomo trend all through uh, he's been trending on Twitter from yesterday and Twitter Nigeria even up until today and there have been several reactions mixed reactions uh, some people have Con condemn the statement which he allegedly made concerning the people who are perpetrating these acts um, in Lagos, Nigeria, and of course they have uh, they've not reacted very kindly to him on social media. Well, uh, so so uh, so you can't. There would always be a back and forth, you know, with numerous things in the election season. So uh, the, I I like the fact that he you know did put out a response, you know, but beyond putting out a response like this, which I will get into later. Beyond putting out a response like this, it is now their responsibility to find out who, who because there's a video showing faces. And it and from what I've seen, it's not possible to charge anyone or put stickers on vehicles or, or uh, keke maro, as they're properly called, or buses or anything in those parts without their you know authority without they giving a go ahead you know so them or him saying you know that it, they have no idea who these people are it's just it's a little shocking but once again it's a good thing that he has said we have no idea this you know, hasn't come from us you know it's not you know about the um um, um and all of that good thing so are they now going to go ahead and find these people um you know and of course maybe get them arrested you know for whatever you know that they've done so far that's one thing another thing is in a statement, you know, that he made, you know, he's once again, of course, reiterated these our turn thing, you know, that a lot of Nigerians will definitely react to because the presidency is not turn by turn. It is not a, oh, you have done, okay, so now it's our turn to, you know, to take over. That's not why it's done. And Nigerians are desperate for a leader in 2023 that is best qualified physically and mentally and educationally in every way possible to take that seat, not just the next person's turn. That's not what we're talking about in 2023. That's another thing. And the final thing that I will say, if you look at the video, the, ex the you know, the full the length of the video, version. he made mention of the people who he blames. It says, oh, you know, we normally don't, you know, do anything on social media, you know, but this is coming from, uh, uh, or they said to the president, then he said stuff like, oh, you know, Igbos e or, oh, or the, PDP. the PDP or, you know, our, our political enemies and some of all of that, which once again brings back the conversation, um, you know, uh, um, concerning Igbos in Nigeria. Why do they always need to be singled out, you know, to be blamed for the most random things that happen in Lagos or in any part of the country? There's always a, there's, it seems like a tag, you know, that, that, that is placed on, on, on the Igbo tribe, which everyone has continued to speak against because he could have used any other person. But now it seems like the narrative has been, if you remember when the senator, when the senator was caught, you know, in a in complex in Abuja brutalizing someone. Yeah. And then his response 
when he was called out on social media and, and the National Assembly was that, oh, it must be IPOB people who were, you know, booing him at the complex then. So it feels like a, you know, dog whistling every time. So uh, another, thing, another thing that, I mean, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. There's nothing more that needs to be said. But I'd like to further emphasize on the last point that you raised, where he blamed the PDP or he allegedly blamed the PDP and the Igbos for what is going on. Now, in a very sensitive period, we're mm -hmm. edging closer to the elections. And we must be very careful of our utterances. Right now, what we're dealing with, we do not need it fueled by ethnicity or religious divides. So I do think that the responsible thing to do would be to call him to order because such statements are statements that can be possibly classified as inciting. You know, some have said that these statements can incite people to react the wrong way. Right now, it's there's, of course, there's division between the IPOB and then there's the Afeni Fere and, you know, we have uh, uh, the headsmen. There are different people that are clamoring for different things for the country. You do not just come and single out one ethnic tribe and lay the blame on them. So these are some of the conversations. Unless you can say you have done your due diligence, you've done your investigation, and without a shadow of doubt, there is conclusive evidence that this was done by the PDP or by the Igbos, yeah. not just making a blanket statement. Yeah, but, but to be to be um, fair, and you know, just to be uh, um, factual here, he didn't blame you know mm. anybody. He's he, he was it was a blanket statement saying you know he's not sure who, who may be doing this. It might be their political enemies, might be the PDP, might be the Igbos, and all of that. But my problem is you don't have to don't throw you don't it have in to even say there. It. You don't just throw it in there. You know, because it could be anybody, you know. So if you would have left it as, oh, this could just be our political enemies. And the fact that that name or that, you know, word, the, the, the tribe rather, keeps coming out anytime that there are issues like this, it, it tells the mentality that they have, or it might give a picture of the mentality they have, you know, towards... This is you know, exactly why Rwanda does not in any way subscribe to ethnicity of some sort. After they've come out from the genocide, it's like, don't come and say, oh, this one is... Uh, who, uh, to see this one is don't no divisions here where all people of Rwanda don't try to discriminate but yeah. I mean sometimes we, we always have asked this question is it really possible to do politics without ethnicity politics that isn't laced politics that's not laced with religion or ethnicity of any form because what we do is oh I'd rather vote my brother my brother is the one in power it's pretty difficult it's is pretty it, difficult yeah. here because you know our leadership recruitment process here in Nigeria hasn't gotten to that level yet we have not been able to deep, to um, refine it to that level where people can actually have a full campaign that is um, um, uh, based on the, what they have the to offer. The content of their character, yeah. the quality that they have yes, to offer as opposed you know, to where they're from. Issue-based campaign, that's what they call yes. it. We haven't gotten there yet and so there will continue to be distractions with, uh, which are religious and tribal and, you know, and, and financial and whatnot. Um, these things will happen until the Independent National Electoral Commission and the Nigerian government, the Nigerian society itself, has been able to completely, you know, refine their um, electoral or leadership recruitment process uh, to be issue-based. Um, and That's of course, you know, to. yes, and not, 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 it's my turn. Um, like we yeah. said, presidency, governorship, being a leader here is not a turn-by-turn -turn affair. You must earn the trust of the people by the work that you've done and the legacy you've left behind. We hope that Nigerians will look beyond religion, ethnicity, tribe and vote in 2023 for who they think is rightfully fit for office as opposed to who they think they would either benefit from or whose turn you know, it might be. And that's...